So yeah, we're doing it. We're doing it today. We're going to talk about Darby. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> Sorry. We'll also bring up some news headlines and some comments of the day and we'll hang out. My name is Tom. You're watching the Watchman River channel. And as I do every single day, I remind you, I'm not a prophet. I'm not a pastor and I'm not even a great teacher. I'm just a dude that loves the Lord. I love talking about the Lord and I love hanging out with you guys. So get comfortable Grab yourself something to eat and drink. Maybe you want some coffee or tea. Ooh, have some Ovaltine and some rye toast. Or grab whatever it is that you like to eat and drink when you're hanging out with an old friend and a fellow servant of the Lord. Let's get busy. So today I'm going to talk a little insanity because that's quite frankly what this, what this is, insanity, okay? I, I'm going to say this because it's got to be said because if I don't say this, my head's going to explode. You know, this has been building up for years. And if I don't bring this out and talk about this, then I'm literally going to make a mess out of this car because my head will explode. And that's messy. All right. Have you ever heard someone sum up all their political beliefs with like one line, like a like a CNN headline? They have one line that sums up everything they know about politics. I knew one guy who used to say this, and it was his one line. It was all he knew about politics. He used to say, the Republicans are for the rich and the Democrats are for the poor. So I will always vote Democratic. And I'd say, well, elaborate on that. What do you mean by that? Well, no, no, no let me tell you, let me tell you, the Republicans are for the rich and the Democrats are for the poor. And that's why I always vote Democratic. <laughs> it just always That was his line. Okay, well, we got the same thing. We got, and I might scrunch my lips when I talk about this, just to prepare you and anyone listening to this on a on a podcast platform, just know whenever you hear my voice like this, it means I'm scrunching my lips, okay? So here it is. This is the one line that so many Christians use. John Nelson Darby invented the secret rapture in 1830. If I had a dollar for every time I've heard that, if I had a dollar, I, I, I'd be sailing off, you know, living in the mountains somewhere. I'd be living it like a high hog because I, I hear it all the time. It's in the comments almost every single day. You know, oh, you believe in this rapture. Let me, let me give you a little tip. You should search out John Nelson Darby and find out what he, that he was the one who made up the secret rapture in 1830. John Nelson Darby was born on March 3rd, 1801, and he made up the false secret rapture in 1830. <laughs> I think I'm getting my point across. That's the talking point. I even found something on Google here that said, rapture doctrine invented by John Darby in 1830. The origin of rapture false doctrine. John Darby, 1830. Uh, the rapture doctrine did not exist before John Darby invented it in 1830. Okay, all right, all right. Let, let me go to scripture here, okay? Can I please go to scripture? Okay, let's see. First Thessalonians 4, 16 through 18. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel and with the trumpet of God and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And thus we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore, comfort one another with these words. Charles, uh, uh, not Charles, uh, John Nelson Darby wrote this. He wrote this. Well, no, wait a minute. No, this is from first. Thoughts. No, Paul wrote this. Oh, Paul wrote this 2000 years ago. Oh, okay. All right. Let me go to another one. First Corinthians 15, 50 through 52. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed. Another Darby. Darby wrote that. Oh, wait, no, wait. That's another Paul 2000 years ago. Like I, I, I'm in scripture right now. Uh, how about this one? Jesus words, John 14, one through three. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself that where I am, there you may be also. How about we go to Revelation 3.10? Because you have kept my command to persevere, I will also keep you 
from the hour of trial, which shall come upon the whole world to test those who dwell on the earth. Did, did John Nelson Darby write all these things? No, it's scripture. And that's what, that's what makes my head just explode. That they're trying to tell me that a guy, and the poor guy who just like, he gets trash talked every day of the week. He was talking about the rapture, but he invented it in 1830. John Nelson Darby. What are you talking about? You're asking me to question my own eyes. When I look at in scripture, I'm seeing the rapture all over the place, but I'm, I'm not supposed to say that. I'm supposed to fall into line and talk about John Nelson Darby. It, it, I hear it every day. I hear it every single day. And I, and I, they're, they're, they say, look, you got to learn the truth. John Nelson Darby made this up. It's like my teacher's the Holy Spirit. And I'm looking at scripture. I I, it, I, just, I don't get it. it. Makes my head want to explode. Makes my head want to explode. To me, it's like saying, it's like somebody saying at some point in the future, you know, Jesus dying on the cross is a made up doctrine that Billy Graham made up in 1967. Be like, what are you talking about? Let's stick to scripture. Let's go back to scripture. But the problem is, John Nelson Darby has been taught at seminaries for the last 40 years as the inventor of the secret rapture. And, you know, seminaries nowadays, and I'm not putting them all down, but 99% of them are not biblically based. Sorry to say. Sorry to say. It's just, I, I, it's always flipped me out because I've always thought, like, you're telling me to question my own eyes. You're telling me that all the scriptures about the rapture aren't there. <laughs> and they were just made up by a guy in 1830. Like, get off that narrative. Like, when, when I see that in a comment, let me tell you something, because it's always in that way. Let me tell you something. You believe in this secret rapture, but I ask you, have you ever researched John Nelson Darby? And then my eyes roll up in the back of my head, you know, to the point where it's almost painful and they get stuck. <laughs> that happens to me sometimes. Don't do this John Nelson Darby thing. Get a stronger argument if you don't want to believe in the rapture. Okay? <laughs> Please. All right, let's get to some news headlines of the day and see what's going on, okay? From Israel Today, Syrian sources are reporting a massive explosion near Damascus, once again, where Israeli planes are believed to have struck a Hezbollah arms depot early this morning. This was early Sunday morning, yesterday morning. Uh, from the Jerusalem Post, explosions rock Damascus, cause unknown. Explosions were heard near Damascus early on Sunday morning, according to the Syrian state media outlet, SANA. That's S-A-N-A. -A. Uh, the report added that the cause of the explosion was being uh, verified, while state media has not attributed the explosions to alleged Israeli airstrikes. Footage shared on social media reportedly from the scene showed explosions and fires erupting in areas northwest of Damascus. You just wonder how much longer this is going to go on. I just, I can't believe what we've seen, how many strikes have been on Damascus uh, recently. It's incredible. Next, we've got a message to Israel. Saudi Arabia appoints first ambassador to the Palestinians. Saudi ambassador to Jordan presents credentials to Palestinian leaders' top advisor amid reports of an impending normalization agreement with Riyadh's demands for significant Israeli concessions towards the Palestinians. We see that every day. You know, somebody's like, hey, we'll be friends with you, but, but you got to give the Palestinians all your land and, and money. <laughs> then we will be your friend after we kick you out of the land. Next from the Times of Israel, Hezbollah. Next war will be in Israel's Galilee. The IDF posts will become graveyards. The next war between Israel and Hezbollah will take place in Israel's Galilee region. A senior commander in the Lebanese terror group warned on Saturday, the latest threat in an escalating war of words between the two sides. Our battle will be in the Galilee. And if the enemy and its tanks enter Lebanon, they will not be able to leave, the commander said in an interview with the Hezbollah-linked Almanar TV network. The threat, the threat came 
Four days after Defense Minister Yoav Gallant, or Gallant toured Israel's border with Lebanon and warned the head of Iran backed Hezbollah not to make a mistake. If an escalation or conflict develops here, we will return Lebanon to the Stone Age, Gallant said. In the Saturday interview, Jihad said that Hezbollah will destroy all the IDF military posts in the next battle, turning them into graveyards and causing all Israeli soldiers to flee. Okay. They got one they got one small problem that ends up being the biggest problem in the universe. They the hand of God is on Israel. So it doesn't mean Israel's not going to go through hard times because they are. But the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob has that nation. And they don't take that into account. But one day they will, and it's going to be painful. Next, Israel on guard for Hezbollah chemical weapons attack. Indications are growing that Hezbollah could use chemical weapons to attack Israel in the next uh, war. The group has access to a Syrian military research site that runs an active non-conventional weapons program, a new report claims. Israeli officials said previously that Syria was purchasing large quantities of chemical substances and trying to produce deadly nerve gas at the CERS facility. Intelligence sources say that President al-Assad uh, tasked a highly secretive unit, Branch, Branch 450, with the project. Next, from the Jerusalem Post, we have Iran is close to testing nuclear weapons for the first time, says European intelligence. The Islamic Republic of Iran is close to possibly testing a nuclear weapons device and has sought to obtain illicit technology for its active atomic weapons program, according to a series of shocking European intelligence reports released in 2023. So we shall see what happens there. We talk about this every day because Israel is the compass of the entire world. It's the prophetic Bible prophecy compass. You always look at what's going on in Israel. Uh, next, we've got from Beginning of Sorrows News on Telegram, Channel 13 experts said, the Iranians see our internal divisions and consider this the fulfillment of Khomeini's prediction. We are in a very dangerous moment. Our relations with America have weakened and our internal and the internal division in Israel has intensified. So, yeah, I think all the all the warring factions within Israel are looking and thinking like this may be our time. And it's, you know. Am I saying like the rapture is going to happen this year when I look at all this stuff? Well, I, I happen to think it is. But am I saying it has to 100 percent? No, I'm not. But man, I look at every single thing that all these people are talking about. And I, I, I just can't, I'm just, I'm stuck on, I'm stuck on the next couple months. Maybe I'm wrong. God didn't tell me. I'm not going to even zone it down to a high watch period. I told you, I think all of 2023 is a high watch period. And I won't get into the, I won't shrink the watch periods. It's not my style. I just don't do that. But I see all the signs and I'm looking up every day because I do. I think the rapture could happen today. Yeah, I think it could tomorrow. Yep. The next day. Oh, yeah, it could every day, every day. And it's only because all the signs I'm seeing next. We've got uh, some. Uh, this is from World War Three info on Telegram. And it's from Russia. Something big will happen soon. A huge echelon of the Russian army has been reported in Omsk, not far from the border with Kazakhstan. Uh, this happened also weeks and days before the invasion of Ukraine. There's video and stuff, and they're moving a bunch of tanks and stuff. And we'll see what goes on there. You know what? I got to tell you, I can read all this news. And it doesn't worry me 1% because... I belong to Jesus, and he loves me a lot. I know, I don't get it either, but he does. And I rest in him because he's not nervous about one thing that's going on in this world. Not one thing. And I belong to him. So I just say to him, Lord, I'm yours. So I'm not going to worry about this. You tell me throughout scripture, do not worry. So I won't worry. But, but like, I'm your responsibility, Lord. So I'm going to rest in you. And, you know, throw me in a little bag and carry me around. <laughs> he doesn't have to do that because I'm in the palm of his hand. <laughs> uh, 
But, you know, so don't worry about this stuff. When you hear about this stuff, don't worry about it. I know sometimes it's easier said than done. I know that sometimes you worry about your your grown children who don't know the Lord. But man, you just keep telling the Lord, Lord, I don't want to worry about my kids that don't belong to you. I don't want to worry. I'm going to put this in your hands. Do that. Do that. Keep praying. Keep telling the Lord, Lord, my kids not knowing you is not my problem. It's your problem. Please. Chinese military says it's figured out how to build laser weapons that can fire indefinitely. The Chinese military has announced what could be a major breakthrough in energy weapon tech if it holds up. As the South China Morning Post reports, representatives from the country's National University of Defense Technology say they've developed a state-of-the-art cooling system that would allow high-energy lasers to remain powered up indefinitely without getting too hot. While laser technology has existed for decades, these high-energy beams generate so much excess heat that they often go haywire, hampering previous attempts at similar weapon systems around the world. The new Chinese cooling system, according to the report, would use gas that blows through the weapon to remove excess heat and allow for weapons to shoot precise laser beams for an indefinite amount of time without losing power or getting distorted. Sounds like some weapon they'll use in the seven-year tribulation, doesn't it? Uh, the Hawaii, terrible wildfires. Uh, the death toll is up to 96. They say at least 1,000 are unaccounted for. I think it's probably a lot more than that. Very, very hard to watch the footage. Very, very fishy videos I've seen about that whole thing. You know... Something happened in this world the last three years that made me personally lose all trust in all leaders in this world. I'll leave it at that. I have no trust. I don't believe them. I don't believe what they say. I don't believe what they do. I don't believe they, that one country in this world has their people. I don't believe one country in this world has their people in mind. I think they're all out for themselves. All right. And I just said it. <laughs> Massive wildfire outbreak has broken out in the Northwest territories of Canada, burning hundreds of thousands of acres in just a few hours. Thousands have been evacuated across various small communities. But just like Lahaina, serious telecommunications failure is ongoing. They're burning the world. Whether you believe it's Satan you know, God allowing it and it's Satan doing it or whether you believe it's man, men doing it. Uh, I think it's a combination of the two, honestly. But we're seeing fires all over the world, all over the world. And somebody will say, oh, the rapture's not for 10 years. You know what? We'll be cigarette ashes by then. <laughs> no, it's happening soon. We're in the season. Level 1 and 2 evacuation has been issued for the Bedrock fires in Oregon. Those are going on now. Also, the Houston, Texas Fire Department has been responding to a large mulch fire burning on the northwest side of the city. It's a pretty big fire. It doesn't look like a little mulch fire. I saw some footage of that. Pretty incredible. Next, we've got the CSU. Hurricane experts increase the number of expected named storms for 2023. Meteorologists for at Colorado State University announced on Thursday that they have increased the number of named storms they predict will occur during this year's hurricane season. This is the second time this summer the researchers have upped their predictions. It started out at 13, and then in April they said it'll be 15 hurricanes, I think, and now they're saying it's going to be 18 hurricanes. We will see. All right. Next, we've got this is just it's incredible end times. Gen Z is swapping traditional faiths for magic spells. Nettie has been practicing magic for 16 years. She cast the spell to get her current job in baking. She credits other spells with securing subsequent salary raises. She once used a spell to make her boss like her more. Another bagged her love. Uh, another spell bagged her the love of her life seven years ago. I'm sure the guy is very happy to find that out. 
<laughs> I'm here because of your spell, supposedly. She still has the honey jar she used for it, into which she puts herbs, a petition, and a Corona bottle cap that he had discarded. She assures me he knows about it. She was raised a Catholic, and Nettie has not completely reneged on the faith, nor does she see any conflict in casting spells and praying to saints. You might call her a Christian witch. You might be surprised to know that there are thousands of them. Doesn't surprise me, because we are living in the very last days, and Jesus is about to come and rapture the church, the people that belong to him. So no, Christian witches does, doesn't surprise me. Nothing shocks me anymore. Nothing. Nothing. You could show me, you could show me video of aliens flying out of a cow's butt, and I'd be like, ah, who knows? <laughs> I mean, who knows? <laughs> Sorry. All right. Here we go. Let's get to some comments of the day, shall we? Robert Armstrong. I can feel the point of the sword of Jesus through the Holy Spirit convicting, calling, and warning all unbelievers to repent. I am a child of God through Jesus Christ, and I feel the power getting stronger every day. Keep preaching the good news every day, Tom. I will, Robert. Thank you for that. Thank you for that. Anil Mahabir. Mahabir. It might be Mahabir. Jesus can't be struck again with the wrath of God. Amen. We who are in him and are now his body cannot and will not be struck by God's wrath. Hallelujah. I had talked about that on Saturday. And uh, I thank you for that. Yeah. Yeah. We have the Holy Spirit in us. And God is not going to show his wrath to his Holy Spirit that's dwelling in us. That's why we are not here for the seven year tribulation. That's why the church, the church is not given any instruction for what to do during the seven-year tribulation. Just Anna, soon, beauty unfathomable awaits. Peace and understanding await. We go from misery to bliss in a single moment. Lord, please come soon. Thank you, Anna. Yeah. yeah peace and understanding await. We go from misery to bliss in a single moment. Oh, I'm looking forward to that moment, aren't you? I am. J Church. Excellent, Tom. Yes, the Lord weaves his plan throughout the ages. Praise his holy name. Thank you, Jesus. He's the master weaver, isn't he? The way the Old Testament unfolds to the New Testament and the New Testament is infolded into the Old Testament is it's beyond miraculous. It's beyond miraculous. Let's do another one. Chris Caswell, north from south is finite, east from west is infinite. That's how powerful Jesus' love and salvation are for those of us who trust and believe in him. Yeah, I've thought of that many times. It's amazing. It's amazing. Betty Mukami, wow, powerful way of explaining the striking of Christ the rock. Yes, he was struck once and for all. We're the temple of the Holy Spirit, and indeed, he dwells in us. God would be going against his word by striking Christ twice, for he is embodied in us through the Holy Spirit. I have never looked at it this in this manner. Thank you, Tom. Thank you, Betty. It's not me. It's just scripture. Let's do one more. Deborah Erskine. Every single day, more than once, I pray, Lord, come quickly. And every day I follow that with, please, Terry, as long as possible, so many more may come to know you. My heart breaks for those who don't know the Lord. May we be obedient to share his love and grace with all we know and meet even strangers in the grocery store. Um, we may be planting or watering seeds, and it may be our interaction that causes them to listen to the Holy Spirit who has been speaking to their hearts. Maranatha, thank you for that, Deborah. Thank you for that. That is so true. You never know. You never know who you're going to meet in a grocery store and the simple little things you can say to them that are very easy to say that will have a lasting impression on them. You hear, hey, God bless you, and you think he does every day because we're, we belong to God. We belong to Jesus, and we think about him every day. 
somebody at a grocery store that you may say, hey, God bless you, have a great day. They may think about that for months because they may think nobody's ever said that to me in such a sincere way since I was a kid and my grandma said it to me or whatever. It doesn't take much to plant seeds and then leave the watering to God. But we can do little things. You know, we can say to somebody, ah, you know, you talk to most anyone you talk to complains about something, right? That's kind of the way of the world. So you see somebody, hey, how are you? I'm all right. My shoulder's killing me. Uh, you know, hey, you know what? I believe in Jesus and I, I believe he listens to prayers. Do, would you mind if I prayed for you? You wouldn't believe what that can do for people. And I'm not even saying, like, if you want to stand there and they're like, yes, I would love that. You could pray for him right there. But I'm almost saying it like you could say, like, I'm, I'm going to go in my car and pray for you. And then you go in your car and pray for them. But it's seeds, serious planting of seeds. And then you tell the Lord, Lord, I just planted that seed. And now will you water that seed? Can you bring that into fruition, Lord? Don't underestimate, never underestimate the power of prayer and the power of God. Never underestimate it. He wants everyone. He doesn't want anyone to perish. He doesn't want anyone to perish. He wants everyone. But we know from the word of God that no, wide is the path to destruction. Most are going to say, no, thank you to the amazing miracle that the God of the universe paid for your sins. Most people will say, no, I don't want that. No, no, religion bit me really hard when I was a kid, so I don't want anything to do with it. Well, it's not, I'm not talking religion right now. I'm talking God's only begotten son, Jesus Christ, came to earth to pay for your sins. That's what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about a religious system where you have to walk into a building three times a week or maybe four and some kind of check box Christianity. No, what I'm trying to get across to you guys who are on the fence or you guys who reject Jesus is that the God of the universe sent his son to solve the problem of sin because God is completely holy and pure and perfect and he can't look upon sin. He can't do it. He's too pure. He's too, he's so powerful, but he's so pure. He can't look upon sin. So we're sinners, all of us. We're all sinners. And God sent his only begotten son, Jesus, to earth to pay for those sins. And you say, well, how did he pay for it? With blood, with his own blood. He put on human flesh as a baby. Put on the human flesh because Jesus is eternal backwards, forwards, up, down, back, front. Jesus is eternal, but he left that place of eternity, that place where time doesn't exist. Time was created for earth. He left that eternal place that had no time and he stepped into time, put on human flesh, lived perfectly. It was all planned. He was the lamb slain from the foundation of the world. There is always a plan. If mankind falls and they sin, which Adam and Eve did. Do you believe in a literal Adam and Eve? Yeah, I do. Yeah, exactly. When they fell, the plan started kicking in because it was always there. And Jesus knew at the appointed time, I'm going to enter into humanity. I'm going to be 100% God and 100% man in the same body. Don't try to figure it out. You can't. And Jesus lived perfectly to rescue us. And Jesus was brutalized and marred beyond recognition because he loves you. And it was all part of the plan. And Jesus went to a cross where he was nailed to it and he shed blood that is so powerful. It removes our sins. It takes our sins from us takes them away from us as far as the east is from the west. It washes us white as snow. Why did he do that? Because he loves you. And he wants to spend eternity with you in paradise. 
And all I can do every day is just get you to try to open your eyes to see. Most people know they're sinners. You know, they, they don't. It's a word that we got from the Bible, sin. But it's, it's falling short of God's perfect expectations. You know, God expects total perfection because he is total perfection. But he knows we can't do it. And that's why he sent Jesus. And that's why Jesus died for your sins and shed that powerful blood. And then he was buried and he rose again. He's coming back. That's the gospel. That's the good news. The whole problem was taken care of. But now you're left with the decision. The, the decision is, will you just say, I, I don't need that. I just don't feel like I need that. Or I don't believe in Jesus. I think it's a myth. You don't want to do that. You'll be led off to hell if your sins are exposed on judgment day. Everyone who believes in Jesus, our sins aren't showing. They were paid for. They're gone. It's like they're beneath the deepest ocean that God himself doesn't even remember them. But if you show up on judgment day and you have sin showing, you'll end up in hell. And it's not a party. You don't want to go there. So turn to Jesus. Do it soon because I'm telling you, your time is running out. Your time is running out. That's what I got for you today. Uh, I'm going to shut the camera off now. I'm going to pray for every person who bumps into this video. And if we're not raptured today, and oh, guys, today is a perfectly good day for the rapture. But if not, God willing, I will see you tomorrow. I love you guys.